This is a preview of our 17th and 18th of April antique and art sale and this month is so worth a look through the website. There are so many interesting things all the way through the sale and I really recommend having a close look. It's whether you're interested in oriental items, um, weapons, silver, clocks, just all sorts of interesting things and quite a few things I've never seen before at all. Um, we're starting here with these few items which are the first lots in our art sale which are letters written by Paul Nash to Edward Burrow, both extremely famous artists. The good thing about this one, this letter to Edward Burrow, is that on reverse he has drawn this little ink drawing. Uh, the letter is regarding a, a visit to the Chelsea Flower Show and that is Paul Nash and his wife at the Chelsea Flower Show admiring the orchids. That's really nice. That's Edward Burrow's monogram down there. But um, that's one of them. There are little cards here with little drawings. These are by Paul Nash as well. That's, that's his monogram again. And this drawing's by Paul Nash. And then on here is a letter written in 1934 talking about um, a trip to the fair. And this is a uh, little drawing of the, the, the wall of death that he went to see at the fair. So really interesting, great little historical art items there and very difficult to value as well. The, I mean, a drawing like this, I think that's, I, that's likely to surprise us what that makes. The estimate I think is five to, five to 500 or something like that, but they're, they're here to sell without a reserve. They're individual lots. Uh, what else have we got here? <laughs> to the other extreme, this, this came from a local um, probate house clearance and it's a first war period um, tank personnel mask. So the people inside those horrific looking first war period tanks, that's what they wore with chain mail, mouth guards and this is, this is all steel with um, fabric back and leather covering. Looks gruesome doesn't it? But very rare items. Um, that mask is like, well the estimate is three to five hundred. Could make a bit more than that, really, that one. That's a, uh, a vintage piece of enamel. This is an original advertising door finger plate for Spratt's dog food. This would have been screwed to the door. They're quite rare items. That should be um, two or three hundred pounds, I suppose. That's, that's name the object. Never seen one of these before. Uh, it's, it's Victorian silver with an ivory handle. And that's for peeling oranges <laughs> when you haven't got any fingernails. That's, that's what you use, an orange peeler. Very posh. This came in, a lady brought this in, a uh, case with 10 sovereigns on the lid. We certainly didn't expect it to have 10 sovereigns, but it did. So there's one lot of gold sovereigns. They averaged about just over £200 each at auction. So certainly around £2,000 worth in that box, which is quite exciting. And... What else have we got? We'll just wander around the room and have a quick look round. We've got some fantastic um, postcard albums this time. So two really good large albums of, of early 20th century postcards. This one in particular is very fragile. The, the actual pages of the album are fragile. The cards inside are great and they are all sort of 1905 to 1920. They cover the first war years. But look at this one, just have a close look at that. That's a real naughty card. And, uh, but if we look at the back of it, it was sent in August 1918. Look at that, 100 years ago that people had that sort of sense of humour. <laughs> and there are loads of them in that album. Really interesting lot. So that's a good album there. There's another postcard album here, which is, um, it depicts the Battle of Stepney which um, was in 1911, I think. Uh, and the good thing about these is they were actually written and sent at the time. So the postmarks are for 1911. And these are um, the Siege of Sydney Street, which is the famous battle that Winston Churchill actually um, was there when it was happening. So that's interesting. And that, that's Churchill stood there. Can't you see it in the shiny lights? So let's have a look, see what else we've got. Uh, behind you, we've got... Um, 
gold chider figure of Aida, that's nice. These are solid silver, these Victorian vases. And that's a gold chider figure as well. More silver over here. Fantastic um, Italian silver samurai warrior on horseback and another knight in armour over here. There's solid silver. So that's silver as well. And then moving along here. This is um, one of the Chinese things that we've had in from private houses. So this is a Chinese bronze and cloisonne enamel bowl, but it's got this fantastic jade handle on the lid. So a carved wood lid, which is a bit cracked and damaged, but that jade handle is fantastic. And then what else have we got? We'll move on here. A couple of nice things in here. This, this again came from a local house clearance, a probate job. This is a Ming Dynasty incense burner. It's, um, it has a very unusual um, 16 character impressed mark under the base, which I haven't seen before. And the most unusual part is it has its original stand. So estimate on that is something over a thousand, but it's uh, from a local estate. There's no reserve on it. This is lovely. This is um, oriental silver and colored ena enamel. It needs cleaning properly. It's all caked with um, old attempts to clean it up and um, That'll be beautiful when it's properly cleaned, but it's the, the matching sugar bowl and cream jug that go with them. Beautiful things. Again from another deceased estate, a pair of beautiful Japanese bronze vases from about 1900 with dragons. Fantastic detail to those. Look at that. So there's a pair of those. And they're going to be something around a thousand or so. And underneath it, a model um, mortar cannon just there. Masses of things along the tables over here. I look, really like this. Sort of a, something for the, for the desk. A sort of retro desk clock and barometer and thermometer. That's smart, isn't it? That should be about £200, I suppose. And what else? More letters from the same estate as Edward Burra. And around here. Fantastic um, Chinese Buddha here. I think it's Chinese, could be a Thai one this one. But it's all carved wood, full size. Fantastic. I really like that. Uh, an original Goldfinger James Bond poster. In pretty good condition as well. And the haunted churchyard, coin in the slot machine. Here. Um, lots and lots of uh, ceramics and studio pottery in this time. And these are interesting. So these are Chinese carved wood and gilded, uh, and I'm told that they're street signs. So they have these hanging in the street in, in China, and these are the names of the various streets. And someone Chinese came in this week, and we asked them to translate them. And one of these says, the smoke from many families flower the air like fireworks. And the other one says, Peach Road in the shade of a 10-way street. That's, I love that. That's really interesting. Um, I don't know which says which. <laughs> she didn't tell us that. But they're quite, quite good large-scale items, aren't they? Estimates on those is sort of three to 500 for the pair. And underneath them, you've got these Tibetan um, decorative prayer wheels. Which I think they put their prayers inside these canisters. They're quite decorative things for a hundred or two, something like that. And what else have we got? So I think what we're going to do now is we're just going to change over and, and Will is going to show you some of the watches and the jewellery from this sale. Hello there, welcome back. Uh, just a few more lots to point out now for the afternoon section of our main antique sale, which is on Wednesday. Uh, so we start off with the watches uh, in the afternoon on the Wednesday. Uh, so I've got two out here for you here, two of the sort of star lots for, that I think are quite stylish from this sale. Uh, so it's the first two lots in, in the watches section. So the first one here is lot 350 and it's a Maurice Lacroix, um, which is a, generally a, a, a luxury uh, wristwatch, but it's more on the cheap side. But it's still a very good quality uh, luxury wristwatch. It's got its lovely dials on there, should be about... Uh, 1500 to 2000, something like that. So it's really good 
um, quality watch still for quite a competitive price. The next one here, 351, is a Corum wristwatch, and it, this is an automatic one. So the first one here was manual, um, manual wind. This one's an automatic, uh, and it also has its original stainless steel strap. And you can pick that one up for between six and eight hundred with its original box as well. So you can't, can't really complain for that. Six to eight hundred pounds for a nice luxury wristwatch. A uh, few bits of jewellery here to go on to next. Start off with this one at the front, lot 558. It's an American 14 karat gold and diamond set bracelet. Beautiful central heart shaped diamond here, which is a rose cut diamond. It's a, probably at about a carat, that central stone. And hope, we're hoping to get between 1800 and 2200 for that, I think. But a beautiful, dainty bracelet, that one there. Uh, to either side of them, we've got these two gold boxes. Both from the same person, obviously. <laughs> but they are Italian, and they are, as well, 18 karat gold. So they're solid gold, these very fine quality boxes. Very well made. And really, they're going to make um, scrap gold money. So if, if you can pick them up for that, or even a bit more, it's such an investment for that sort of price. And they're beautiful quality boxes. You wouldn't, you wouldn't find that anywhere else without having to pay for a brand name. But there's some beautiful boxes there. Just show you the inside of that one. Oh. But you could take that out and just make that a, a simple gold box. And they should be around two and a half thousand each. Um, I think the scrap price is on those. Lovely pair of pearl and diamond earrings. About three carats of diamonds in these in total. I think we're hoping to get around two and a half thousand for those. Again, very well priced. And 586, which are a pair of solitaire diamond ear studs. Always very popular, these. Very stylish things at the moment. Should be around three to five hundred for those. Our usual range of um, rings, well, I say usual, it changes every single month. <laughs> There's always some star lots that, that are there to point out. A very unusual fire opal ring there. Might be able to see the flares of blue in it as we swap it around. And a black opal right behind it there. And then some much more flashy rings. You've got a a massive cocktail ring at the back here with baguette cut diamonds in the centre there. That should be around 2,000. And one of the star lots for the jewellery is this 2.09 carat solitaire diamond ring. And that's in 18 carat white gold as well. It's a beautiful solitaire diamond ring. And for that you're, you're probably at auction looking to pay around 2,500 for it, but I challenge you to go into any sing any jewellers and find a two carat diamond ring for under five thousand. It's such a rarity. And then just a few more to point out in this tray here. Uh, now I hear from a lot of people that um, the classic line is all you sell is old stuff. It's um, it's all dusty. I don't really want to know about it. Well, this is um, an example of a lot of the more modern stuff that we can sell as well. Uh, so this is mainly all Scandinavian jewellery. Um, except for the Pandora bracelets at the side here, but it's mainly all either Scandinavian or arts and crafts jewellery. And it's just a bit more of a stylish, and it's even just in silver as well, but it's um, some beautiful pieces in here. So it's mainly all from either Denmark, um, you've got this bracelet here from Denmark, you've got some Jensen here, and this is a, a Jensen necklace as well. So they're all, they're all brand names uh, still, but just still reasonably priced, around £100 for each of these, really. We've got bracelets and necklaces sets, all sorts in there, but really still well worth a look through. Uh, the best way, as we always say, to look through this is, is um, either online, if, if you can't make it in. Um, they're all very well photographed online. Or if you can make it in, then please do come along. It's all set out on the day and on the two view days which are before the sale, on the Monday and Tuesday. So the Monday view day is from 9 until 5, the Tuesday is from 9 until 7, 
Uh, and then the antique sale is on Wednesday, which starts at 10 a.m. in the morning and goes on pretty well all day. Um, and then the Thursday is when we have the picture sale, which are lot 1,000 onwards, and that starts at 11 o'clock in the morning. So um, see what you can find and let us know. Thank you very much.